Hey everybody, it's Callus back after a long work day. Honestly, pretty exhausted. But one thing that is giving me a spark of energy in the best way, I can tell you guys loud and proud, we have exceeded last year's total in donations thanks to the generosity of multiple donors today, a couple of which were three-figure donations. And we now, as of this year, have the biggest prize pool in Callus Invitational history. We have exceeded last year's total by a few dollars. It's the highest we've ever had. And the tournament still has several rounds to go. So really the only question now is how high will it go? How high will we set the bar to try to break next year? Which obviously gets harder and harder every time. This tournament has grown every year. I really, uh, being honest with you, I thought maybe that trend would stop this year. I thought it would be very, very hard and unlikely to top last year. But this community never seems to stop delivering Never ceases to amaze me. We did it again, and I'm super proud of that. Donations are still open if you want to set the bar even higher, but we have met and exceeded our goal, and I'm real proud of it. Now back to the matter at hand. We've got ourselves a best of three between Arctic and Mikmer. This is in the lower bracket in round four of Callus Invitational. And as you guys know, as it goes with the lower bracket, that means the loser here will be out of the tournament. These are two creative players that can get a little funky in the builder. Arctic a fan favorite for some of the really weird stuff that he's brought along the way. And Mikmer has just been a consistently good player for the past year or two. Uh, last year in his Callus Invitational debut, he had a solid finish, top eight I believe. Uh, he also had a positive finish in SPL this past year. And here he is again with at least two wins in Callus Invitational, looking for more. So consistency is usually a great indicator of a truly good player. Who's it going to be? Who continues? Who's out? Let's find out. Arctic's on the bottom. Mikmer's on the top. Flygon lead, huh? We saw that earlier from Dice, but not really a thing in ADV as of this tournament. Doesn't really do anything here. It does scare off T-Tar, of course. Unless he has Ice Beam, he's not going to stay. And even then, he's going to be worried about, like, CB Earthquake or something cheesy. So they both end up switching and spiking up a bunch. Only two layers beneath Arctic's team. All three beneath Mikmer's. But Skarm gets burnt for Arctic, which can't be good. Will-O-Wisp from Gar. And that Drill Peck, of course, does nothing after that. And now we have Articuno coming in for Arctic, which takes a Thunderbolt for about a third, but gets an unlucky 10% para. Looking at some kind of Articuno Superman squad for Arctic. Little unusual, but throughout this tournament he has shown himself to be a very stall-heavy player. Loves those fat rest mons. You, I mean, Zapdos and Articuno both probably have rest. And he very well may have an Aromatherapy or Heal Bell user, such as Blissey, in the back. So we've got stallier teams here. There is a Bliss for both players, and Soft Boiled for Mikmer, kind of obligatory after taking the spikes and then the chip damage. And there is the Aromatherapy that I envisioned, so those status problems gone for Arctic. Like I said, it's some kind of Articuno Superman squad here. And then Mikmer running, seemingly generic Big 5 TSS. Doesn't have to be Big 5 in a literal sense. There might not be a Swampert there, but... We've got four of the big five, and all signs thus far point to a generic TSS squad for Mikmer. Back he goes to Skarm. That was kind of a weird soft boil. Didn't really recover too, too much, but I guess lack of anything better to do and just playing it uber safe. Ice Beam fishing for a freeze there on Skarm, which is great. Ice Beam is just a great mid-ground move against anything because you can just randomly get there and freeze stuff which is obviously a pretty devastating status effect and arctic going to catch the opposing flag on now with toxic which is good and now wheezing in for arctic so we know the full team for him weird squad here superman does not usually carry articuno or wheezing and he's got both so like i don't know maybe i shouldn't even be calling this superman but that's basically what it is, right? It's five flying or levitating pokes, plus the bliss. Uh, so he just built in, doesn't care about spikes, and he's going to try to win by having spikes that the opponent does care about that he doesn't. 
Whether or not Mick cares about spikes is up for debate. He very well may care about getting his tower burned here with Will-O-Wisp, but Mick does have at least three of his six that are spikes immune, and hell, depending on what the last one is, maybe he's got four of six that are spikes immune. And certainly if these are more passive teams that are relying on spikes to win, and they happen to both be not spikes proof, but spikes resistant in and of themselves, then that is certainly going to lead to a longer game. Arctic's team looks like it does not have a lot of offense whatsoever outside of grinding somebody out with spikes and other forms of residual damage. If that is the case, then I think Mikmer has the advantage and should win a late game here. But that being said, there's multiple ice beams for Arctic. Uh, he can just power full power with Zapdos T-Bolt. There's certainly ways to hack your way out of this. Gengar here has nearly died. He saved himself by regaining health with Giga Drain there, barely. And he's effectively trading with Blissey here. Guard dies for the first knockout. However, that puts Blissey down to a range in which when it comes in on spikes next time, it will die. And we know there's no spinner for Arctic. So that Blissey is absolutely dead to rights next time it comes in. Arctic saves it for fodder, which turns out to be wise because the Skarm comes in for free. But nevertheless, it's going to die next time it comes in. And note how much Fire Blast did there from Flygon to Skarm. Flygon usually has minimal or zero special attack investment, even when it runs Fire Blast. So the fact that it did that amount of damage means that it's either some funky spread that does have investment, and maybe it's got like Giga Drain or HP Ice or some funky surprise move in the back, or alternatively, it could be a physically defensive Skarmory for Arctic rather than, well, I was going to say the more traditional, but I mean the really traditional thing actually is physically defensive. That came first, but in more modern times, the standard, I guess is the better term, Far and away more popular is the special defense invested Skarmory. It may not be that, though. It may be an old school physical Skarm. Good old defense investment. The drill pack doesn't really tell me one way or another. Gotta be honest, don't really know how much drill pack is supposed to do to Skarm normally, but that is barely negating lefties. It is 7 and then 6%, and it is yet another Pokemon with rest. In fact, seemingly... Everything other than the Blissey itself and I guess Flygon, everything else has rest. The Skarm does, Articuno does, Zapdos hasn't shown it, but I suspect that it does. And even Weezing has rest, so this is an Arctic team through and through. This is the way this man likes to build, and by man I mean like 11-year-old child. But this is the way that he likes to build. He likes these very fat, sturdy, stally teams with a bazillion rest mons and a heel bell. This is Arctic 101. Whether it gets it done here against Mikmer, unclear. We've got ourselves a close game, and it is less close after that critical hit. That mattered for sure. I don't know why that killed, even with a crit. That's got to be a non-com or careful. That's got to be a non-special defense plus rest Zapdos. It's got to be like a modest rest Zapdos or something funky to that effect. Because a bulky Zapdos there, which is almost certainly what it is when it is rest, a bulky Zapdos there would not have died to that crit. By, by like quite a bit too. It would have survived it always and comfortably. So I think it was actually like some kind of an offensive zap that had rest just because why not heal yourself and get out of the way? Because Blissey can just make it go away and just get you back in action, I think is the thought process there. But the rest actually makes it misleading and makes it look like it's going to be a bulky defensive set, when in actuality, I think that was a modest Zapdos there, despite the fact that it had rest, which is awkward. So yeah, uh, all that is to say that that critical hit mattered, which it obviously did, and that leaves us in a air quotes 5-5, five to five. Uh, but in actuality, it is basically 5-4 to four because Blissey dies when she comes in, and there's no way around that. Additionally, there is a freeze here from Mikmer, Freezing Weezing, so that matters as well. Relevant hacks coming down for Mikmer with both the crit and the freeze. Ice Beam, you know, it's one of those moves. Ice Beam and Rock Slide are just the two big moves in ADV that are just complete nonsense. Steel games away like nothing else. 
you just get there sometimes. They just get their added effects and break the game wide open sometimes. Fire Blast there is threatening to thaw the Weezing. But he's already thawed anyway, and he's going to get Sludge down. Hey, Sludge Bomb is going to Poison Bliss, which doesn't do as much as Toxic does, because it's regular poison rather than badly poisoned. And it's funky that Game Freak decided there needed to be like two different kinds of poisons, regular poison and bad poison, but alas, here we are. But Blissey can fight through it reasonably well. The Sludge Bombs themselves are only doing... I think I saw them as low as 27, and now 30, I think, is the best one that I saw. Roughly that range. That one does 28. Blissey's fine. Just soft-boiling it away. Don't actually know the last move for Weezing, but Arctic, I know, is a fan of Rest and Boom on the same set. We've already seen him use that on Lax earlier in the tour, so while I don't necessarily specifically think that the last move is Boom on this Weezing, I also wouldn't 100% rule it out. It could be still. Well, uh, there's yet another relevant piece of hacks, unfortunately. That's going to be the second poke that Mikmer has killed via critical hit. Zapdos dies to the crit, and now Weezing dies with the crit plus the sand. That's going to leave us in a Mikmer lead at, again, air quotes 5-4, to four, but really 5-3 to three because of the Blissey. And Aerodactyl seems like a tough poke in this situation as well. Rock Slide there, 28% is like not a bazillion damage, but it's not nothing. It could certainly add up, especially if Mikmer has another way to chip the Skarm. But Arrow seems like a tough poke here. It would instantly drop Articuno. Articuno never lives Rock Slide. Even if it were hypothetically 252 HP, 252 defense, bold, it still could never live the rock slide. Uh, so it's a huge issue there. And then Flygon is pretty healthy right now. But if it comes in anticipating rock slide and it gets hit with double edge, then that can change pretty quickly as well. So I don't think that Arctic is like dead, dead, dead to the arrow. But it's definitely a poke that he's not going to have an easy time dealing with. And the bigger picture issue here is how does Arctic win the game? Uh, anything that's like remotely offensive for him, other than I guess maybe the Flygon is dead. And certainly spikes are not going to be a win con for Arctic in this game. So now he's going to try to poison and flinch combo to get Flygon down on the other end. He does not get the flinch that he's looking for. And he's going to go for rest. So, yes, literally every single Pokemon on the team, other than the Blissey, has rest. Five rest users plus an Aroma Blissey is the Articuno Weezing Superman special here from Arctic. As always, you've just you got to applaud the kids' creativity. I, I don't know if this team is good or not good. I could see matchups where it would be. And certainly matchups like this where it looks like it's super not good because you're too spikes reliant and the other team doesn't give a shit about spikes. As it turns out, four out of the six pokes for Mikmer are immune. So this is obviously not a good matchup for the team that Arctic brought. Uh, but whatever you think of the team, good, bad, indifferent, it's really cool. It's really creative. And it's something that nobody else has really brought anything like this. So you got to applaud the kids' creativity, if nothing else. That being said, like I said, I think it's a bad matchup. Bad matchup, plus Mikmer getting relevant hacks, such as killing two Pokemon via crits, I think is going to be too much for Arctic to overcome, and I believe Mikmer is going to be carrying a 1-0 lead going into Game 2. Sleeping Flygon is the last poke here. Rock Slide connects but doesn't kill. Pending a miss here, we're done right here and now. And the Rock Slide does, in fact, connect, and Flygon faints. So Mikmer does take the 1-0 lead here. As you guys know by now, it's best of three. That game on the long side, 88 turns. Don't have too much to add that I didn't say already. Like I said, I thought it was a bad matchup for Arctic in the first place. That plus relevant hacks for Mikmer. What are you going to do? So Mikmer takes game one, and we move along to the second game. Arctic must win this game and a theoretical game three. Or he, despite his impressive run and his awkward circumstances getting here, will be eliminated from Callus Invitational 6. Can he make the comeback against Mikmer, a top 8 finisher from last year? 
It's got to start here. Here's game two. Switch those sides for continuity. Arctic is on the bottom. Mikmur is on the top. Meta and Hariyama, respectively. And apparently Arctic does not want to deal with Hariyama. He goes with the immediate explosion, but does not connect with Hari or the bulky water that he maybe thought was coming in. He instead connects with Jirachi and comes up well short of killing it. And Mikmur now, if he can pass Leech Seed to it, or if it has its own wish that it can eat, whatever, might be able to heal that and basically kill the meta for free. So it's a good start for Mikmur, who's already up a game. Gotta feel good about where he is right now. I think that was not a bad play for Arctic, but a risky play for Arctic, and one that in this case, the risk got punished. It didn't pay off. So Mikmur, I think, is off to an early lead here. He's going to leech up on Lax. This seems to be a physical or mixed offense team for Arctic. Here comes Hariyama coming into Body Slam. A big Body Slam at that. A ton of damage. But he does avoid Paralysis here. Knockoff coming. Yep. Something's about to lose its lefties. And something ends up being Claydol. This might be a Magdal team for Arctic. We haven't seen the Mag part of it, but... All the stuff that he's shown up to this point are certainly things that appreciate Magneton support. Uh, Skarm is a poke that Lax wants gone. Most Kuhn sets want it gone, unless you're like modest sleep talk or something to that effect. Very well could be a Magdal for Arctic, but at the same time, it's Arctic. He builds weird shit. You never know. Ice Beam Kuhn there has potential to hacks Arctic out of this game. He could have frozen something for Mikmur. He could have crit the Celebi there and... Killed that and caught himself right back up. Those things did not occur. And now the Snorlax is going to be completely negated by the bulky Leech Seed Celebi. This certainly, a Salamence as well. This screams Magdal. You would think the last poke is Mag. It feels so obvious. But again, it's Arctic. So sometimes what is obvious is not actually what's there. Here comes the Lax. And let me see. What's the last poke going to be for Mikmur? By the way... He freezes there, which matters. And he goes to Hari. Let's see, last poke for Mikmur. That's a great question. Something that deals with fighters, perhaps, such as a Salamence. Could also just be like a Dugtrio. Yep, Salamence makes sense. Jirachi does go down to Earthquake there, so we do have ourselves a 5-5 five to five game. That's a whiff protect there for Mikmur on what I guess might be a Wishmance. On a very defensive team for Mikmur. And yeah, it is not Magdal for Arctic. I, Of course it's not. Magneton is too obvious. It makes too much sense. Instead, it is Blissey. Which, if it has aromatherapy, as it did for him last game, and that seems to be Arctic's favorite move of all time, then that would get rid of that freeze problem. But that has not happened just yet. And yet another Mon loses its item. Knockoff is going to remove it from Mence, who shows itself to be either a Wish or a Mixed Mence as he goes Dragon Claw here. And uh, Celebi stays in. He goes Dragon Claw again. So if he has Fire Blast, he doesn't go for it there. And he doesn't go for it there either. He just switches back to Kuhn. So makes me curious what the set is for that Mence. Lax is still frozen from before. Hari with a chance to do even more damage to something. And does predict the Mence and get it with Rock Slide. All that damage adds up because he doesn't have lefties anymore. But of note, we are playing a Sandless game as well. So things like the Lax, the Celebi, the Suicune that are already bulky to begin with are going to be even bulkier when Sand is not there to negate lefties. Of course, that's if they they even have their lefties because the Hariyama is trying to make that not a thing. So Arctic here has had quite a few chances to... Get the thaw on his lax. His full health lax, might I add. It's nursed itself all the way this whole time through a sandless game. Back up to 100%. But he's done trying to thaw. He doesn't want to get the coon too boosted. He feels the need to respond to it with bliss. And here that comes. Ooh, and it's a calm mind bliss. So that is not going to have aromatherapy for Arctic. So he's going to have to get rid of that freeze the old-fashioned way. And Mikmur, despite being way ahead on boosts, is not interested in getting in a combine war with Blissey. So out of the way he goes. Some switching here leads us back to this matchup. It's going to be even more opportunities for this Lax to thaw, and he just won't. That thing has been frozen for what feels like 10 turns. Will not thaw. Finally! 
and he gets a body slam. Oh, a good body slam. Doesn't crit, but he does para. And that's going to prompt him back. Full power works as well. All right, back in business for Arctic. And there is CM, but should be immediately deterred by the Hariyama. And is, there's the brick break just in case Arctic got cute and stayed in, which he didn't, thinking that Claydol's going to scare him off here. And that is correct. We end up mens on mens. And Mikber's comfortable staying in. He goes for Dragon Claw. That would have certainly killed his counterpart. Interesting that he goes for Dragon Claw again there. 22%. First one did 21. In theory, the lack should survive here. But no, the troll damage roll, possibly something close to a max roll, is going to take out the lax who could have easily lived there and gone for a rest or a boom, both of which would have been relevant. But Mikmer gets the cooperative roll, and Arctic, just like before, finds himself behind. Now, granted, Mikmer's team lacks offense in a big way and may have a hard time actually closing games. He's going to give Arctic a million opportunities to set up with this Coon or set up with the Bliss, both of which are CM users. But those are going to be really the only win conditions here. Claydol, obviously not a sweeper, and a low, no lefties Salamence is not going to do it for Arctic either. So he's going to have to get there with the Coon or the Blissey. Right now, Celebi's keeping him at bay, but it's pretty temporary. He can freeze the Celebi, he can crit the Celebi, or if it really goes long, he can PP stall him out of Leech Seed with that pressure ability. There's 16 base Leech Seeds, effectively 8 if he's using them against Kuhn. If we go really, really long here, we can stall him out. Mikva's actually trying to stall him out of Ice Beams here. He's trying to go this whole time without a crit or a freeze. It is a dangerous game that he's playing. And interestingly, Arctic this whole time is just ice beaming. He's not bothering calm mining for a second time. Now he does, but man, how many ice beams is that? This says that he's down to two, and I'm not even sure if that's correct. I don't know how many of those might have been against the other coon, and I'm way too lazy at this point to go back and try to look at it. But man... How many ice beams in a row was that? It felt like, again, like 10 or something. Some outrageous amount. And Mikmer just forever avoided the crit or the freeze. So it has felt to me like Mikmer has gotten the better end of the RNG thus far in the series. He got two relevant crit knockouts in the previous game. And he has certainly avoided many opportunities to get really unlucky and be in a really bad spot. In this game, certainly the Celebi at any time could have just been dropped by a crit or a freeze or what have you. And we're looking at a very different situation. But as it stands, we've got ourselves a 4-4 in what is again looking like a longer game. Last one, 88 turns or whatever it was, pushing 90. And this one is looking like it'll be at least the same, if not more. 4-4 four four in a sandless, spikeless game. This could take a minute. Now, Hariyama, unfortunately, misses an opportunity there to go for Rock Slide. Goes for Knock instead, which does, like, nothing. But the Mens is not going to be a super reliable long-term switch into the Hari on every single turn that it attacks it. Even very minor, even just Knock Off. The damage stays. The damage adds up. And if he doesn't have a wish to pass to it... And it would have to be his own wish at this point because we know Bliss isn't going to have wish on a calm mindset. If there is no wish anywhere, then slowly but surely, and it really is pretty damn slowly in this case, but slowly but surely the Mens will die if we keep doing that loop. There is Parish Song from B for Mikmer. And there's, hey, more chip on the Mens. Not good chip, but any chip is good chip, right? 8%. He does miss Leech Seed, though, which Arctur, uh, Arctic was willing to take. And now he's going to Dragon Claw. Might as well get some value out of it. Selby returns. Has this thing shown nuts? It's only ever Dragon Clawed. Finally, he switches it up and goes Flamethrower there. And it's met by an instant recover. Flamethrower again, fishing for a crit. He gets a burn this time, but man... Mikmer has given himself a lot of opportunities to lose his Celebi to a crit, and it has just never come, which has got to be frustrating for Arctic. He switches it up to Dragon Claw. He's had a couple opportunities to wish there that he hasn't taken, so it makes me think that the men's genuinely doesn't have it. 
We end up doll on doll, and it is a boom, and it is very heavy, but it doesn't kill him. It gets him for 92%. Dragon Claw will finish him, though, and it leaves us in a 3-3. Three three. And again, the Hariyama comes in for the Threaten. Rock Slide there, obviously aimed at the Salamence. That's not what he finds. It's the Coon, CM, and Knockoff. That Coon is going to be also without its lefties. Only Blissey for Arctic has an item at this moment. How many Leech Seeds are left? This says seven, but again, I don't know how accurate that is given pressure. We do know that it is Parish Song, however, which is going to be able to get the Coon out of here, and that's what he goes for, but that is also limited pp now granted parish song i don't believe is affected by pressure but he does only have eight of those to begin with there is surf coon on coon uh this could definitely get long like i said no spike no sand they both have pressure mons i think mcmur has the advantage just because arctic flat out has two pokes that don't have lefties but like i don't even know how much that matters and that freeze actually might end up being a bad thing because I don't think, I think it just, well, it doesn't matter now because he thaws, but I, I don't know that he even has the damage to kill the Coon. I guess the Brick Breaks there do a little bit more than I thought, but Arctic had a lot of opportunities there to thaw, and Mikmer could just waste multiple turns and multiple things of PP only to have the Coon thaw a little later on and then rest up. So that freeze didn't seem like as big of a deal. Surely he's not going to leave the Blissey in here to get knocked off or brick broken. And he doesn't. Yeah, no spikes, no sand. Pressure mons on each side. I think we're going to be in for a grind here, boys. think this one might be on the longer side. But the two mons without lefties, if Mikver could just find a way to keep chipping them, the damage will eventually add up. It feels like Mikmer has the edge in this late game and should win. Might win very slowly, might take a lot of turns, but I think Mikmer is supposed to win this game. Coon on Coon is weird, though. Like, they can both just see him up a million times, one of them crits the other, and oh, well, I, I guess we're done here. I don't know that a Combine Pissing Contest is the best play for Mikmer, but, like, he might not have a choice. If he runs out of Leech Seeds, or if he lets the Coon get too boosted and it's just too late to switch Celebi in... He might not have a choice. Yeah, they're both committed at this point. It is a Coon CM pissing contest. They are both boosting to the sky. Mikmer's more boosted, and he's faster. So theoretical advantage for Mikmer. And here we go, surfing each other, fishing for crits. Another advantage, not to be forgotten, is that one of them has lefties and one of them doesn't. So now it's Mikmer who's fishing for a crit, which he totally doesn't deserve given all the times earlier that he let Arctic fish for a crit that never came. But nobody cares about deserves in the world of Pokemon. The game does not care. RNG is RNG. Whether you deserve it or not, sometimes you get it. Will Mikmer, or Arctic in this case, find a crit? Or do we get the nightmare scenario where neither one finds a crit and this takes eternity? Like I said, Arctix doesn't have lefties, but it doesn't even matter in this situation. Both CMing up, not even attacking anymore. Okay. Oh boy. Might have to switch this over to fast speed, boys and girls. Probably all boys. We are... CMing up, and now we're resting at full. I'm going to go ahead and switch her over to fast, guys, if this is what we're going to be doing. This might take a minute, and it's not riveting viewing. Let's see, where are we at with PP? It's hard to know if the, pre if the count is correct because of pressure, but I think McBurn has a little bit more PP. There was one random attack. All right, we'll go back to normal now that something has changed. Mens is in, and he's got Roar. That makes sense. So after all that, the Coons don't even kill each other. And it's going to be the Salamence using Roar, which I don't mind in general. 
but I think it's way, way, way better when you have spikes. But I guess Arctic only has the two mons on the team that can learn Roar, and he felt like the Coon on this squad needed to have Ice Beam, which I think he's right. I think I agree with. So I guess by default, if you're one of those people who feels like you need a phaser, can't leave home without it, I guess Salamence gets the short end of the stick and has to have the spikeless roar. So here we go again with Coon on Coon. Sleeping Coon on Coon to be even more exciting. Don't forget, though, it's CM Bliss, so... I mean, if he can, like, freeze the Hari or something, the Hari is going to check the Bliss indefinitely, but... If you can do something with the Hari, hit it with a crit or freeze it or weaken it enough to make it so Bliss can crit it or something, then maybe the Bliss can just sweep the game. But certainly, if you can run Mikmer out of Leech Siege, which he's already low on, then there's nothing stopping the B. It's just the Hariyama that's preventing it from going wild right now. Switching it up to Rock Slide there after a couple of Brick Breaks. Back to B. Wake up. And go back to sleep. He's like my cats. He wakes up only to go back to sleep. Doesn't do a whole lot else. Not a bad life, if you ask me. Here's Hari and Blissey. Sure. Opportunity to attack something. Not that it does a lot. Knock off getting him for 2%. But he doesn't have lefties, thanks to knock off. So that 2% is there to stay for now. And now Kuhn is boosting up for Mikmer, as is Blissey for Arctic. Hasn't actually shown what his attacking moves are. In fact, hasn't shown anything other than Calm Mind. Okay. Yeah, Calm Mind pissing contest once again. Ice Beam tickles. 8 hole percent. Nothing. Ice Beam again. And Thunderbolt does a lot more. So Mikmer is going to need a crit or freeze. Or this Blissey is going to be a problem. Yeah, those Thunderbolts are going to add up real quick. And he is not trying to stall him out of Thunderbolts. He is fishing for a crit. And he's not even going to get another chance because of Para. And just like that, Kuhn is dead. And all of a sudden it looks like Arctic is going to win this game. Hariyama here. Is going to have to, I think, crit Bliss. And Arctic is not even going to potentially allow it. He immediately goes to Coon, which I think is smart. And there's the rest. And with that, I think the tables have completely turned. I think Arctic is now going to win this game. It still might take a while if they play it out to the end. This is not a short one. We are approaching turn 200 here, which is exactly what I need after 12-hour workday. But I think I think that Arctic is going to send us to a game three. Yeah, fair enough. And Mikmer just concedes, which I appreciate. I appreciate. I don't think that was a premature forfeit. And saving me time and letting me sleep for a little while longer is a fantastic thing. So thank you for that, Mikmer. All right. So... We're going to go to a third and final game between these two players. Like I said, you guys know the stakes, but as a very brief refresher, the winner will be still in the tournament in the lower bracket, and the other player, the loser, is going to be out of here. That's all you need to know. I guess I should remind you real quick, if you've been enjoying the series right now, take a second, real quick, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. Let's get into game three. Switch those sides for continuity. Arctic on the bottom, Mikmer on top. Zapdos, Titar, two most common leads in the tier. And it is a BP to meta and an immediate DD for Mikmer, who now goes for an immediate Earthquake. Meteor Mash does connect, but Titar survives comfortably. And Aerodactyl is going to sneak in on Earthquake. Man, does Mikmer just win the game? If he had Dragon Danced again there, is it just over? Pretty incredible. You DD a second time there and you just win. Game over. Pack it up. Pack it in. Crazy. But that is not what occurred. And man, the more that Arctic shows of his team, the more it looks like that actually would have been it. DD again is GG. Penning a rock slide miss. Crazy. 
Now, obviously, it's a very hard play to make, and McMurray did not know that at the time, but it looks so true. But anyway, let's focus on what is happening rather than what could have happened. Smeargle did get some spikes down, and then he blew up to finish off Tar. It leaves us in a 5-5 five five situation, but this meta is really low, and he can't even survive the rock slide that he resists. And the answer for Arctic, apparently, is his own Aerodactyl. Meta, evidently, was his only rock resist. He's desperate, and he goes for an Aerodactyl Speed Tide, despite knowing that the opposing Aerodactyl is locked in on Rock Slide already. That is not a good situation for Arctic, and that makes me think he's very vulnerable to that Aerodactyl. And things get even worse as Jirachi paralyzes Gengar via Thunder, which obviously is a pretty high chance to do that thanks to serene grace but nevertheless not what arctic needs in this moment he goes to his own arrow and he's gonna have to be surgical with this prediction does he click earthquake here he does not neutral hidden power there indicates bug or fighting the former being more likely and they're both gonna switch mikmer takes the opportunity to get his aerodactyl in and Arctic really just does not have an answer. He again resorts to going Arrow Speed Tie, knowing that the other Aerodactyl is locked on Rock Slide. That is real desperate for Arctic. This game looking very good for Mikmer. He just does not have an answer for the Arrow after his Metagross went down. Seems very overly reliant on Meta as a Rock Resist, and Mikmer has the team and the matchup to punish that. With the DD Titar and the Aerodactyl. Got the Rock Spam going on, which is exactly what Arctic, with only the one Rock Resist, doesn't want. Mikmer, I think, has found himself just as he did in Game 1 with a solid matchup. And probably in good shape to win this. Though Starmie does eat that HP bug and take a lot. Rapid Spin gets off from Mikmer. Interesting. Arctic could have killed it there, but the out prediction comes down. No more spikes. And B is the last poke for Mikmer. It's a Thunderbolt on the way in. 17%. BP to Arrow. Sure. And he Leech Seeds. We saw earlier that he also has Recover. So defensive B of some kind. Over Prediction Earthquake there. Got to make plays, I guess, if you're Arctic. But wrong play, wrong time, unfortunately. Mikmer had the courage to stay in, even knowing that there was an HP bug arrow on the other side. And makes Arctic look like a chump. He's got to get out of the way. Thunderbolt, Psychic, sure. Mikmer furthering his lead, but Arctic refusing to show his last poke here. Better be something damn good. Okay, there's a kill. Progress. But Rachi, we know, is going to negate that rock slide. Titar is probably one of the best things Arctic could have right here. Mikmer's team is vulnerable to a DD Tar, and Thunder misses here. And there's the Dragon Dance for Arctic. This could get there. This could take him to the Promised Land. There's DD number two, Thunder, and Para, but it's lumbed away. That is plus two, plus two Tar looking good to make the comeback. Earthquake. Now Celebi comes in, needs to not have HB bug, which it doesn't. Can he avoid the flinch? Oh, devastating. It's going to come down to an Aerodactyl speed tie, but he misses the rock slide that he needs. Now he gets it. Can he flinch or crit out? Oh. What a heartbreaking disaster way that this game is ending for Arctic. And the Leech Seed connects through the Rock Slide. And now he misses too. If he crits there, he at least still has a chance to flip for it. But that is not the way that it plays out. That is a heartbreaking ending for fan favorite Arctic. That plus two, plus two tar looked real good. To clean it up there and make the big comeback for Arctic. He did not have the set that he needed. He didn't have HP bug. If he did, he would have just won the game. Must have had Ice Beam or HP Grass or what have you. Still had a decent shot to win. Rock Slide there with a crit or a flinch. We're done. If he survives the HP Grass, which I think was a roll, we're done. Those things don't happen. 
But then, even then, Arctic has a shot. Goes to Aerodactyl. Immediately misses Rock Slide, which is an absolute heartbreaker. And even then, he had chances to crit or flinch or what have you. It just never comes. Could have ended in an Aerodactyl speed tie. But Arctic does not get a chance to flip that coin. Mikmer with the better end of the hacks throughout this series. Had good matchups, in my view, in Game 1 and Game 3. And got the better end of the RNG in those games. It's very difficult to be on the bad end of that. When you're in bad matchups to begin with and your opponent is getting luckier than you, it's really hard and it's really frustrating. And it didn't feel like there was a lot that Arctic could have done differently in those two games that he did not win. But you know, as much as I feel for the kid, I respect him. And I think we all respect him after seeing his showing in this Callus Invitational. Clearly someone who can hang at this level and belongs in the main event. If there is a Callus Invitational 7 next year, there's a great chance that Arctic will be invited straight to the main event. But as it stands today, the result is in. It's going to be Mikmer eliminating Arctic by a 2-1 victory. Arctic out of the tournament and Mikmer, a top 8 finisher last year, shall continue on. Appreciate you guys watching a longer series. Maybe not this game, but certainly the first two and that middle one in particular, almost 200 turns. If my time and energy and exhaustion is worthy of two seconds of your time, please just click the like button. It's all I ask. It's all I need in life. Other than that, I guess we're done here for the night, but there's going to be more callous content tomorrow. Stay tuned for that. Appreciate you watching. I will see you guys in the next video.